ladies and gentlemen, I got the one and only <laughs> Devon Franklin. Yo, what's up? What's up, man? <laughs> Glad to be here. Listen, this is the a mo- movie producer, best-selling author, uh, yeah. writer, director. Do you sing? Uh, no, no, <laughs> not, 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 not. Yeah, I make a, I make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Oh, yes. And might I add, preacher. Yes. Hey, yes. you preach. No, you preach, preach. <laughs> right? A little bit. You did know, you know yeah, that? Yeah, did you, did yeah. you know you were going to? No, I mean, I started doing it when I was 15 years old. Um, you know, I was involved in the church that I grew up in uh-huh. in East Oakland, California, called Wings of Love. Okay. Mayor Not the Ministries. And my uncle was the pastor. It was a family church. And okay. when I turned 15, they were like, you know, it's youth day and we want you to preach. And I said, okay. And rocked. You it. know, next thing you know, it just started evolving. You know? All right, you got to tell me, did you kill it the first time or was it kind of uh, like... No, I did pretty good. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I really... Um, let, based- me, let me... Let me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I based my uh, sermon predominantly on a book that Les Brown had out at the time okay, called Live Your good. Dreams. Live Your Dreams. Yeah, and I just loved Les Brown and loved his words. Absolutely. And so that book was very I almost I probably quoted more from that book than the Bible <laughs> <laughs> for my first sermon. he kind of preaches though when he oh yeah oh yeah a lot of people don't know that stuff comes from the Bible oh, yeah. so we love you Les did you listen to uh, uh, Miles Monroe Dr. Miles Monroe oh, you course. remember him oh, of course I do yeah, yeah he's, he's amazing he was a killer man yeah. I, I, I loved him let's so I feel like this I feel like this podcast should be about dreams, right? Oh, okay. Yep, so let's yep. let's. By the way, we have not. What's up, y'all? Let's do it now. I'm your host, Javen. I'm so honored to have my brother from another, <laughs> the one and only Devon Franklin. We're down in Hollywood, Florida, Hollywood the Florida. different Hollywood. <laughs> it's a different Hollywood. Never been here before. <laughs> you yeah. haven't? No. No, this is cool. Welcome, my brother. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> we're, so, we're, we're so glad you're at the real Hollywood. Yeah, man. You uh so so I want us to talk about so we haven't practiced we haven't talked before this at all so everything you're hearing this is just us really just yeah. kind of chopping it up, I, I feel like I want to talk about people's dreams Devon I feel like people are 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 not dreaming big no more yeah. they're not dreaming big no more first first I feel like I want you to define what you think uh or what in your opinion is a I would say a God dream or or or, or like a, a mm. like a good dream mm. well I would say a dream. Um, is a vision, yeah. You know, for the future, yeah. Um, and and I think the challenge is deciphering if it's from God mm. or not, mm. and that's sometimes the hardest part because we have a lot of Definitely. dreams that may not be from God, and to know what to pursue and to know what dream to be open to and which ones maybe not that's that's a hard process that is a hard that is yeah. a hard process how do you even get inspired or so so make it personal what what inspires you because you've done how many movies you've done by the way um do you know produce movies uh four done four uh and then in terms of the movies i've overseen when i was an executive i don't know probably close to 30 uh, oh okay I was yeah. going to say hundreds, but <laughs> no, no, not, I had you way up here. Not hundreds, <laughs> not, not hundreds, man, not yet. Pretty, that's pretty, pretty large. Uh, and I need to backtrack, by the way, and, and talk a little bit about your bio okay. and who okay. you are. Okay. All right, but let's, let's stay on dreams for a quick sure. second. So, so what inspires you or what has inspired you to dream? Because I know it might be different now than it yeah. was back in the day. But yeah. let's, let's talk to some young person that might be watching or somebody that's just trying to figure out yeah. how to get motivated. What, what inspired you to dream? Um. You know, I think pain. Ah, come yeah. On. Oh, oh <laughs> I think God. it was the pain of. I always you know. want an organ on here. <laughs> yeah, you need Yo! it. Yo! <laughs> you better say, all right, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that, that I think a lot of dreams, you know, or ideas for the future are birthed through pain. Um, you know, and I'm the middle child of three boys, and my father died when I was nine years old of a heart attack. And he was 36, and wow. for most of my life, he was he struggled with alcoholism. Okay. And so, you know, my upbringing was uh, at times unstable. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and as a result, like, I just remember, you know, not feeling, you know, like I was really seen or heard, mm. even though, you know, my mother yeah. did the best job she could do and right. brought in the help of my grandmother, my grandmother's seven sisters after my, after my father died. So it wasn't like I didn't have support. It's just I did not feel, you know, seen, heard. Uh, valued and uh, it was it was really watching entertainment and watching TV shows and watching movies where I started to you know experience the power of imagination wow. and the, the and truthfully the power of escapism mm. uh, because entertainment provides an escape wow. and in some definitions that's how entertainment is actually defined 
as 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 an escape. Right. And so for me, you know, the pain of of not fitting in, you know, produced the dream of like, oh, I want to be a part of Hollywood. I want to be a part of the entertainment industry to make content that can inspire and uplift people the same way that it was uplifting me. So Dude, you just killed that. You just yeah. Killed yeah. It. I'm reading a book right now called Leadership Pain. I wish mm. I could think of the name of the author, uh, uh, Samuel Chen. Dude, he's wow. so 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 he has this book and it's really great. And as a matter of fact, it's mandatory reading for all of our leadership here at the church. Wow. Um, I just came across it because another pastor friend of mine told me about it. But I've known him. We've we've been in the same circles. I just didn't know that was him. And he was that author yeah. or whatever. Um, but in there, he what I thought I was getting ready to get was like a how to book, so to speak. But what's in there is like all of these different stories from all these great leaders, Greg mm. Rochelle and all these different people. And they're all t sharing stories like what you I mean, intimate, gut wrenching stories that catapulted them into great leadership. Wow. So I, I, I think it's uh, so interesting that you would say when I say what inspires you for dreams and whatnot, you go, hey, listen, man, it's because of the, the struggle I've been. Through. Absolutely. Without See? a doubt. Uh, there is there is no dream without the struggle. I don't believe there's no dream without the struggle. That's yeah. a wisdom key right there. Y'all should write that down. All right, let's go back to your storyline. Yeah. yeah. So you're originally from Oakland, California. Oakland. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oakland's got a rough, ain't it? Uh, well, I wasn't in Jesus. the rough part. No. Oh, you weren't. Okay. No, okay. No, okay. No, okay. No, no. Cause I just remember going from San Francisco and then driving over the bridge to Oakland, yeah, and I was like, yeah. "Wait a minute, this is yeah, very yeah, yeah." It's a it's a different place depending on what part of Oakland you're in. All right, but you grew up in church. Yeah, I grew up in church. Uh, my great grandfather immigrated from Jamaica. Wow. Uh, to the Bay Area, and did um, you grow up Jamaican style culture? Not that? at all. <laughs> <laughs> not even a little bit. Um, I don't know. It, it, you know, for some reason, I mean, you know, I love yeah, Jamaican yeah, food it stuff, happens. but the culture didn't really trickle down in terms it, it, of how we were raised. So you're just Black American, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you been to Jamaica, by the way? Uh, I have. Yeah. Have, have you met any of your? No, no, I haven't been to Montego Bay, which is where he was from. Where he's from. Yeah. I've been, so then I've been to your. Oh, okay. Uh, original, I, I've been to Montego Bay. What'd oh, you call nice. that? The original, I guess you wouldn't say originated. Or, yeah, I guess. Or, or, or origins or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> something, something like that. <laughs> but I've been there. Nice. Uh, what I want to ask you. All right. I want to ask you, did you go to college? Yeah, I went to the University of Southern California. University of Southern California. All yeah. right, how did you get down there? Um, because I knew I wanted to be in entertainment. And okay. I, knew, I knew, so you knew I what you were doing. to go to college in Los Angeles. And so. I pursued uh, getting admission at UCLA and USC, and I got it. I got into both, and I decided to go to USC. Come on, brother. Yeah, you're, and, and this is personal because you're trying to get away from what you have experienced, or get out of, yeah. or go up. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Really, you know, saying okay, let me go find a way to make something out of myself yeah. in the entertainment business. And so I was very, very focused. I mean, I knew that I wanted to do that like 14, 15 years old yeah. and uh, knew I had to be in LA, knew I had to, you know, be next to Hollywood, knew I needed to get an internship. And so I was, you know, going right. when I was 18 years old, I was, man, I was focused. Wow. Yeah. You end up graduating um, and then you end up working right in the uh, industry or yeah. did it take a minute? No, because uh, my freshman year, I got an internship working for Will Smith. Wow. And uh, and I interned for him my entire college. Uh, I felt career. like I just saw a post with y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what was that yeah, about? Yeah. Your birthday uh, or my his? birthday? It was, it was my your birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, my brother! Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Definitely. Uh, and so we were sh both shooting in Atlanta, different productions. So I ran over to see him as he's shooting the next Bad Boys movie, and we got a chance to spend some time together. And he dropped some words of wisdom on me for my 45th birthday, wow. which I was grateful to receive. And, um, you know, we've been rocking together, man, for, shoot, 26 years. Wow. Yeah. So big I, wheel. so when I, yeah, big wheel. So when I graduated SC, I became an assistant for his manager. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of like how I, you know, Sorry. that, that process was how I got started. You're thinking you're going to do what in the entertainment industry? You're thinking uh, produce. You're, produce. So you knew you wanted to be a producer. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so explain to the people out there in a uh, podcast world, what pr a producer of a movie does or what that means. Basically, it means, you know, you're the one responsible for finding the story, putting the story together with the writer, hiring the director, overseeing the production, selling it to a studio, you know, everything that goes into the quality of a film usually the producer is behind all that and responsible for it in some way. Yeah. And uh, for me as a producer, you know, my job is to find great stories and 
package those stories and get a studio to pay the millions of dollars required to produce the story and then distribute and then they get them to distribute it as well are you are um, you are you intimidated ab- about what you're doing are you confident in what you're doing or yeah. are you trying to figure it out no i'm pretty confident i mean you know like i said i've been doing i've been in the business since i was 18 years old okay uh, so by the time you get the opportunity yeah. you're ready to go yeah 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 i mean i'm you I'm, knew what you're I'm looking really for. good uh, at producing and, and i know how to do it very well uh-huh. and so you know i'm not really that intimidated by it it's just more of like you know getting movies made is always uh, a bit of a challenge it right. takes time so that's the part where i just have to be patient yeah very true you are you are uh in rooms with mostly what uh white people black people mixture uh, mostly white yes all right are you, you are you around the youngest at the, around this uh, time or uh you yeah i mean yeah at that time I, yeah for sure yeah yeah. yeah. So you thinking I'm 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 by myself or no? I mean, because when I first got started, the company was all black. Okay. You know, and then as I you know kind of got into the uh, studio world and became an executive uh, for Columbia Pictures, you know that world was predominantly white. You worked for Columbia too. Yeah, I worked for Columbia Pictures. For all right, about so let's talk about years. that for uh, for a while. So you sure. worked for Columbia Pictures yep. first. Uh, I worked for so I became an assistant. Then I left after two years. Went to go work for a production company for about a year and a half. And then got a job as a studio executive at MGM. Wow. I worked on Beauty Shop and Be Cool. Okay. And then MGM got sold to Columbia Pictures. And then I became an executive at Columbia Pictures. Wow. And so I worked on everything from Pursuit of Happiness to Pink Panther 2 to Captain Phillips to Karate Kid to Jumping the Broom. (laughs) Um, uh, You know, Heaven is for Real, uh, Sparkle. (laughs) Uh, 21. I mean, yeah, I worked on a lot of movies yeah. while I was there. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. Thank you. To yeah, God be cool. the glory, God man. be the glory. Yeah. Exactly. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I want to uh, dive into that for a little while okay. and talk about um, how does one um, get involved in the entertainment industry if you are a late bloomer? If you had dreams and you wanted to do movies, you wanted to do, but, but, but you didn't. You didn't see it. What I love about, and I think that's something to be noted, those of you that are watching or listening uh, to this, is you notice Devon said, you know, from the time he was young, he knew that this was a part of the journey. Because I really think people look at uh, some of the greats, and I would say you'd be one of the greats in your field. Um, You know, they think you just get there. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) think Serena and (laughs) Venus just got this. And I go go pick up a racket, and it's like it don't work that way. No, it doesn't. It you know, really doesn't. So, so what can we say to somebody that may be a late bloomer? Should they just give up on it, or you know, I mean, I think that every, I mean, the thing about entertainment is everyone has their path. Mm. I mean, you look at someone even like a Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman really didn't become Morgan Freeman until he was well into his fifties. Yeah. Uh, Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson was around for a long time before he finally, quote unquote, became Sam Jackson. <laughs> uh, so, you know, when you look at even like going, even though it's not entertainment, but my, you know, my uncle who started the church that I grew up in, he started the church at six, he started that church at 60 years old. Wow. Yeah. So I think that, you know, we can tell ourselves any story and believe that story and that story can come true. So if you tell yourself you've I missed like your that. calling, you've missed your, it's, you're too late. Then it's, you're too late. You, we can tell ourselves any story. Any story. And, and if, we, if we believe it, it will manifest. That's good. So, so we have to be careful the stories we're telling ourselves. That's great. So age is just a suggestion. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, just because you're that age doesn't mean it can't happen. So when it comes to entertainment, it really comes down to what is it? Do you, what do you want to do in entertainment? And really having clarity in that. And anyone can pursue entertainment. You know, you may have to intern. You may have to PA. You may have to take an assistant job. Because in my experience, entertainment is an apprenticeship business. You learn by doing. Mm. And then you can also go and do it the independent route. You can make your own content. You can put your content out and, and, you know, gain a following. And then that'll get you more money to do more. So there's no one way to do it. The biggest thing is keeping the mindset that it's possible. That it's possible. Yeah. What does it, what, what is, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm sure you probably answered this question a thousand times. I think, and I'm asking you a unique question, but yeah, (laughs) no problem. Put you on the spot. Okay. What is the, I'm going to say the recipe of a good, when you look at it, if if somebody brings you a script, how do you know that's a good movie? Um, is there a way to know? Yeah. For me, I got to be emotionally moved by it. Ah. Yeah. If I'm emotionally moved, that's a good sign that it's good to me okay and okay. um and because i've you know been around for so long and read a lot of scripts 
I can read something and, and get a feel for like, oh, yeah. it's moving me, but also I can sell it. Okay. It's like, okay, I'm, I, when I look at a script, I'm thinking about what's the trailer going to be like? Okay. What are the TV spots going to be like? What's the one sheet going to be like? So if I can see some of those things and I feel it, then mm-hmm. I feel like, oh, this is a movie I got to go do. What is, can you tell a good movie by the script? Yes. It's all about the script. Okay. It's all about so the script. So that's where it all starts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it starts with the idea. Okay. Is it a good idea? And then does that idea become a good script? Okay. Because sometimes you can have a good idea and a bad script. And sometimes you can have a bad idea and a good script. Okay. Uh, but the key is when you have both. All right. A really good idea and a really good script. You finally get over to Sony Pictures. Yes. And you become an executive over there. Yes. Do you feel accomplished at this point? Um, No. No, I didn't feel accomplished. No, huh. no. I felt like... I was still, you know, on my Just journey. Working. I was working, you know, needed to prove myself, needed to, you know, do the things I could do to climb the corporate ladder. Okay. Um, so, no, I just felt like, okay, God, you've put me here and let me do a good job with, with <laughs> wow. it, you know, but I did not feel like I had had, had made it at all. Yeah. No. Where, where were you, uh, wh- what part of town were you at uh, during this time? Are you in um, Hollywood? Are you in the Valley? No, we were, so Columbia Pictures was in Culver City. Okay. So, um, I was living... At first, I was living in Hollywood. Then I moved. So I was living like mid-city. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So now, let me ask you this. You fast forward. You move on from executive, uh, being executive at Sony. Uh, did you go? Did you uh, start your own company? Uh, I started my own company about eight years ago. And what is it called? Franklin Entertainment. Franklin Entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> absolutely. What else would it be? <laughs> what was your first project? Uh, my first project was a movie called Miracles from Heaven. Miracles with from Jennifer Heaven. Jennifer Garner and Queen Latifah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're, 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 uh, all right. So this is, this company is geared to putting out what type of material? Um, uplifting, uh, inspirational, and aspirational uh, material. Does it have to be faith based? Uh, it doesn't have to be faith based. You know, faith based tends to be a subset of inspiration and uh, aspiration and motivation. Um, a lot of the movies I've done have a you know faith-based quality to them, mm-hmm. uh, including the television series that I produce. Um, you know, but yeah, I have things in development that uh, have some faith, but not exclusively faith. That's amazing. You you who you work with Tyler Perry? Who are some of the? No, people I have. Well, I have worked with Tyler. Actually, yeah. uh, he was so kind enough to do a voice for me in an animated film that I produced called The Star. Okay. Which was uh, you know about the story of the nativity, but told from the animal's point of view. Okay. And uh, Tyler did a voice for me. Oprah did a voice for me. Um, Tracy Morgan. Uh, you know. Hey, everybody. Um, Stephen Young. Gene Rodriguez, you, you had Zachary me at, Levi. You had me at <laughs> you <know>. Oprah. <laughs> yeah, no, man. I was I was so fortunate to be able to have such an all-star cast come together for that movie. Uh, so that's so this is a cheesy question. Who 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 uh Starstruck? Who 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 would make you Starstruck? Or who did you get Starstruck Starstruck for that you worked with? Um, Anybody? That I've worked with? Or met or whatever. Hmm. Hey folks, Javen here. If you've been having a problem with procrastination, waiting, and just thinking it's going to come tomorrow, you need to get Do It Now. I wait when your best is now. My best-selling book that will change your life. At the end of every chapter, there's an assignment for you to do that's going to get you back moving, get you back motivated. You need to pick up Do It Now today. Why wait when your best is right now? I don't have time to be stupid. I don't know, man. That's a good question. I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't, you, you ever know. met Sydney Portia? No, I never got a chance to meet him. Shh, I, wish I, I wish I would have. Yeah. How about um, Cecily Tyson? You ever met her? No, I never met C- Cecily before C- she C- passed. Cecily Tyson? I mean, you know, I, I guess I was somewhat starstruck when I met Oprah, you know? I would be. Um, yeah, I think so, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, t- because I've been in the business so long, like, you know, it's not as mean that I'm not excited to meet people. I'm right. very excited. Right. But in terms of, like, starstruck, uh, I'd have to think about that. Yeah, interesting. Maybe Al Pacino. Would, would that make... <laughs> I went, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, mafia. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. The Godfather, the Godfather, and all that stuff. I mean, I know we're not supposed to be, but <laughs> I, <laughs> I love right. that. I love That's that kind right. of stuff. All right, let's talk about what's. Uh, you just did a movie. Yes. Was this your first acting? Uh, yeah, yeah. It was first acting yeah, you job, did, man. You, yeah, you did yeah. pretty good. <laughs> Thank I, you. I saw. Uh, I think it was your post or somebody yeah. posted something. Yeah. And I saw a clip. Jesus Revolution. Yeah. So, so is is that your 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 film? By the I way, didn't, I didn't produce it. I just was. Uh, you just talent. It. Yes. Wow. Now, did you pursue that or they pursued you? They pursued me. Uh, shut up. Yeah. Just, so you're thinking what when they called you? I was like, uh, first Gosh. I was getting ready to say. 
they they said, hey, there's a part we want you doing this movie. And I was getting ready to say, well, I'm, I'm not an actor. But I didn't say it. Right, I just right. said, well, maybe I am. You know, I just thought, like, okay, well, God, if you're bringing me this opportunity, then let me not speak against Come on. who he is speaking me to become. Come on. And Come maybe on. something I didn't even know. So instead of me saying, well, I'm not, mm -hmm. it's like, well, maybe I am. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, let me take it. Let me read the script. I read the script. I said, oh, I like this. I want to be a part of this. And they said, cool. And so we did a deal, uh, and I went and did the movie. And the movie. This was shot when? This was shot last year. Last year. How long you been in the business? Uh, I've been in the business since I was 18. So what is that, 20, uh, coming on my 26th, 27th year. After 26, almost 27 years, yeah. you act in your first film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. You, have you done any acting before on stage or uh, When I was in high school. Okay, okay. That was, you okay. know, middle school, but that was it. But no, professionally, no. All right, so no. you're getting ready to say, so the movie... The movie uh, came out. It's the it's one of the top grossing uh, faith-based films um, wow. ever. Uh, it's definitely one of the top grossing faith... It's the, it is the top grossing faith-based film this year. It made over $50 million at the box office, which is huge. Wow. And uh, it really kind of revitalized the faith-based space and, you know, shocked Hollywood mm -hmm. again that this space is a, a space that's alive and well. And so mm -hmm. to be able to go on the road and promote the film as an actor and to do press as an actor, it was, it was amazing. Um, you know what? It's the same sort of process, but it is different yeah. because, you know, when talent. I'm doing a film, I'm behind the camera. When I'm acting, it's like, oh, I'm in front of the camera. I am the talent. And uh, to be able to do both, you know, credibly, that yeah. is really, really, yeah. It just it's That's really a, exciting. Yeah, but you've been in, like you said, you've been in it almost thirty years. You know, yeah. you're pro. So, so <laughs> but I'm still that, learning. That is to be I'm still learning. That is though. to be expected. Yeah. Um, I want to uh, ask you about this term you just brought up faith-based movies and its space in hollywood sure uh sometimes when you get to talking about this it, it becomes a dogmatic conversation i've heard from both sides and mm -hmm. i feel like sometimes we don't strike the right balance in uh talking about because you know christian people think we the only ones why we ain't got you know yeah. and it becomes that and it's like well, yeah but y'all don't support all yeah. right so i ain't gonna uh talk too much i want to turn the platform over to you and i want you to uh talk about that a little bit why why do we need it um will it be more successful and is it part of the future of entertainment in hollywood you know um i think the answer is i hope so yeah uh i think that the audience you know that, that loves faith-based content you know when there's a good movie or a good show they get behind it yeah. um i think that you know hollywood kind of has this almost love-hate relationship, you know, with the faith space. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of it is just because, you know, a lot of the gatekeepers in Hollywood only understand faith through the political lens. Yeah. And, you know, how faith can get politicized, especially kind of in that, you know, the mm -hmm. conservative versus liberal war and whatnot. And so Hollywood being predominantly liberal, you know, without people like me and others who can articulate like, hey, this is not a conservative agenda or liberal agenda it's about the story right you know and right. and people want these type of stories and yeah, so you know i do think that there is a future i hope that there is mm -hmm. and uh i think the onus is on um you know people telling great stories and pushing the industry to get them made you know yeah. and i'm i'm one of many who are doing it and uh doing it successfully Good. and uh you know and there are doors that are opening i believe that uh, will allow more to come forward have you ever been criticized for being a Christian in Hollywood uh, by the religious community? Has that ever come up? You know, I remember hearing somebody saying you can't even be a Christian and be in movies. Yeah, you know, um, the answer is yes on some level. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't really feel that criticism a lot. I haven't heard it in a while, but you know, I'm sure it's out there. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm sure it is. And growing up, it certainly was. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, yeah, I don't really, I don't focus too much on that. What do you say to people that, you know, think uh, Christians shouldn't be involved in entertainment, uh, period, or that we don't have a place for, you know, escapism, if you sure. will, or entertainment, period? Sure. I say clearly you haven't read your Bible. <laughs> clearly. Clearly you're not, you're not based in the word because, you know, two things. One, when you go back to the story of Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, they were interns in the kingdom of Babylon. Because right, Babylon had conquered uh, Israel, and you know King Nebuchadnezzar said, "Hey, you know, 
I want some of the best and brightest of the Israelites to put them into my internship program and right. see if they can qualify for the king's service. Long story short, they do it their way. They don't eat the king's, you know, uh, diet. They eat, you know, their vegetarian diet. They're far surpassed everyone else in the internship program. They get accepted to have full-time employment within the kingdom of Babylon. Every time that they honored God, God didn't take them out of Babylon, which right. was the most secular, you know, institution right. on the planet at the time. Right. He didn't take them out. He elevated them. It's good. And never do you hear God get mad at them for what Nebuchadnezzar's doing. It's good. <laughs> it's just like, no, you're here to serve. You're here to, to bring me glory. You're here to be a light in a dark place. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when it comes to entertainment, you could look at some similar parallels, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very secular environment. There's a lot of different, you know, points of view. Um, and so I think that anyone that says, oh, you know, you, you, you can't be in entertainment. I'm like, well, when, if God can do it for Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and, and Abednego in Babylon, why can't he do it for those of us that are in entertainment? And then also going to the life of Jesus, you know, if we are Christians, we are followers of Christ. Christ was a storyteller. Mm. That's what parables are. Stories. What's a motion picture? It's a a story. story. So how can we be against an industry that furthers the same type of storytelling that our faith is built upon? Wow. So that's when I say, hey, you know, clearly somebody who has that point of view is just in my opinion. You know, not, not reading the word and not really saying, oh, it's not so much about being in that industry. It's about what you do with it. What you do with it. You then start. I feel like you started. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you, when did you get into starting into preaching a lot? Because I, I feel like that's the recent. Right? Um, well, you know, I mean, I've, I've been preaching. I mean, let's see. So when I when I started doing it consistently, when I graduated Okay. college because my uncle asked me to come up once a month to preach at the church in oakland gotcha so i did that so for you about, were you were yeah got yeah it. so i did that for about 10 years i stand corrected <laughs> and then uh <laughs> and then when my first book uh came out called produced by faith that book came out about uh 12 years ago and that really then kind of started you know me preaching more regularly okay and then um i pretty much preached for the most part i was preaching kind of regularly between 2012 and then the pandemic hit and then um, took some time off. And then, you know, recently, you know, it's been kind of building back up again. Building back up. Yeah. We're on a series called The Year of Yes here. And it's almost yeah. like, yeah, just anything God puts in front of yeah. us, we're walking to. And that's why I think it's so interesting when you talked about getting an offer to do the movie and getting ready to say, I yeah. don't know if that's for me, but you're right. saying, nah, you know, I'll do, it. I'll do it. What gives you the inspiration to just fearlessly say yes to God? Um, Cause I've, I've said no before and, uh, and the guy's like, okay, cool. You can say no, do it your way. And, and it just never works never the way works. that it does when, when we say yes to him or I say yes to him. So mm -hmm. that yes to him is, is some in many times an act of surrender, uh, and an act of sacrifice because wow. going back to what we said at the beginning, you know, deciphering between the dreams that we have. And what dreams are from him, what dreams are not, what dreams are now, what dreams are never, wow. what dreams are present, but what dreams are future. Wow. There's certain things, certain dreams for the future we want now, and God's like, no. It's good. So the yes to him is a yes because I want to be whoever he created me to be. It's I want to do whatever he called me to do. And I just work on that yes, yeah. you know, to stay in alignment with him and with the plan. Yeah. And, and that puts it in his timing too. For sure. It does. And, and that for me, cause as someone who is a planner and, and, you know, very, you know, type a mm. and want to control and want things to be my way. <laughs> um, submitting to his timetable is, is one of the hardest things Wow, because, you know, we want it now. We want it now. Uh, and, and sometimes God says, no, yeah. no, not now. Yeah. Not now. I'm, I'm going to give you a yes, but not it's not going to manifest now. Yeah, I always feel like I, I tell the church, God doesn't give us no. It's, it's either uh, it's something else or it's not for you yeah. or not yet. Yes. You know, but God is not a no God. He's a yes God. It's yes. just, you know, some some part of that just doesn't connect with whatever is yeah. going on with you. Yeah. Got a couple of more minutes left. What is your, what's, what's next for Franklin Productions? What's coming yeah. up? What's yeah. going on? Um, I just, I have a movie coming out called Flaming Hot. 
Uh, flaming hot? Yeah, like the flaming hot oh. Cheetos. Yeah. Oh, is it about yeah. Cheetos? It is. Shut it up. Is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is about, it a kids movie or something? No, it's a about, comedy. No. Well, it's it's uh, it's kind of like Pursuit of Happiness, actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a true story. Uh, Eva nice. Longoria directed it. Okay. And um, like it's that. the true story of Richard Montañez, who started as a Mexican janitor. I mean, he's been Mexican his whole life, um, but he started as a janitor uh, working for Frito Lay. And uh, he really wanted to, you know, help the company and said, look, Shut up. if we take this spicy product and we sell it to, you know, my community, I think it'll increase our market share. And so they wow. gave him a chance to take the flaming Hot product to Southern California. Wow. And next thing you know, it took off and it became what we now know as flaming Hot, the brand flamin and Cheetos, Cheetos and all of it. And so um, I, I, I produced a movie on his story of how he rose from being the janitor to becoming one of the top executives of the company. Is he still alive today or he's... Yeah, he's still alive. He's still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. Richard, Dude, alive. that's going to be Super such a good movie. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we just won the South by Southwest Film Festival. Wow. We won the Audience Award. It comes out on Hulu and Disney Plus okay. on June 9th. It's the first movie in the history of Disney to go up on both Hulu and Disney Plus. Uh, and that's just a testament to how good the film is and how much people re resonate with the story. And uh, so that'll be out June 9th. Okay. And then I just wrapped season two of a show I produced for BET called Kingdom Business. Okay. Uh, which is, is that Yolanda? Is that the one yep, Yolanda? Yolanda Adams. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, man, you got to watch it. <laughs> I heard it is it's good. good. I it's haven't good. seen it yet. It's really good. Uh, I heard a lot of good yeah, stuff about BET it. it's on BET Plus. You can stream the first season now. Is that So that's one of yours? Yes. Yes, I'm executive producer of the show. Wow. What is it called again? Kingdom? Kingdom Business. Kingdom Business. Yes. All right, y'all got to check out Kingdom Business and Yolanda yes. is in there and who else? Who's somebody? Um, oh man, Yolanda uh, Adams. We have Michael Beach. We have Michael Jai White. We have Soraya. Kirk Franklin plays a role. Yeah. Um, you there know, you go. We we got everything. And then also, I I'm playing a part in this oh, next yeah. season. Yeah, <laughs> nice. which is great. Really Come cool. On, I like that. Really cool. I like yeah. that. And I didn't even have anything to do with it. You know, the showrunners called me and said, like, "Hey, like, would you uh, play this part?" I said, "Okay, cool." Like yeah, why not? Did, did people think you were the guy from uh, what's what's the Empire. actor from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what's my his buddy, name? my buddy Trey Byer. That's like my real. Yo, brother. if that's not like y'all long lost I twin, know. It's so y'all separated at birth. It's so funny because I was just hanging out with him just this week, and um, his mother and grandmother were in town, and even they said, "Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> that is something, man." Yeah, I mean, it's like with your mama and your grandmama. <laughs> Say, wait a minute, y'all. Wait, something, something ain't right. How, how y'all look this much alike? Is he, does he have Jamaican in in here? Uh, no, he's from Kansas City. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Yes, sir. Y'all do look just I alike, know. It's like crazy, like, like in a good way. <laughs> in you know a good mean? way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, y'all do. Oh.